The course starts with portfolio theory. So we decide how to allocate resources between various assets, stocks, bonds. We look at two types of portfolio theory, the primary one being mean variance, which is a standard fare through any university. Uh, then we also look at uh, growth optimal, uh, a multi-period type of, of portfolio theory. When we finish portfolio theory, we take the implications it has for asset pricing. So we talk about the CAPM, we talk about the Fama French model, we talk about the arbitrage model, and we talk about some multi-period models of asset pricing. We take the application of uh, some of these models in performance measurement, so we can look at the risk-adjusted performance of uh, mutual funds, pension funds, etc. And then we talk about how we test asset pricing models. The theory is great. The question is, after the theory is there, does it reflect what's going on in the world? So we go out and we test. And it turns out you would think it was fairly straightforward. You would use the econometrics that you uh, have been taught. Uh, but it turns out it doesn't exactly work that way. So we'll see what the pitfalls of that are. The final thing we'll talk about is uh, behavioral finance. Everything we've done up to this point will be financial economics, as if we're rational economists studying the markets. Behavioral will say there are things that people do that aren't rational. And will that help us understand portfolio theory? Will it help us understand asset pricing? In portfolio theory, what we look at is we assume people have done their fundamental analysis. They've looked at the individual stocks and bonds, and you want to know how they fit together in a portfolio. So it may be that the risk of a portfolio is quite different from looking at the risk of an individual stock. So we want to combine them in some optimal way. In mean variance, we're trying to look at how you combine just the things that we have to look at are the means of the assets, their variances and covariances. Some of the other models get a little bit more sophisticated, but we want to find out what's happening to the overall portfolio. Many people argue that the most fundamental problem in all of financial economics is to figure out how the assets are priced. Um, there are a lot of other things we look at. We look at options, we look at uh, risk management, but here we're trying to, trying to understand how to price the fundamental assets, stocks and bonds. We focus primarily on stocks. You can apply these skills in a variety of ways. Asset uh, management firms, um, big banks, uh, individual firms here in Vancouver uh, where you'll be looking after portfolios similar to your CS examples. Uh, you may get the opportunity to, to work in, in either your underlying asset valuation or how to put the assets together in a portfolio. The former students who worked as uh, modelers in, uh, in asset pricing for teachers uh, back in Ontario, the Teachers Pension Fund. Uh, there was another student that uh, just graduated recently who's working for the BC Securities Commission in compliance. Um, and some of the things he's doing are really interesting, uh, doing things that have, he, he, he got to actually invent what it was that he was doing to measure performance. So it's really, uh, there are a lot of opportunities. So grading is primarily on exams, 30% on the midterm, 50% on the final, but 20% on assignments. Uh, some of them are pretty simple right at the beginning. There's one major assignment where you have to test asset pricing models. So you get to apply your econometrics. Uh, most people that have done it said it's pretty hard, but at the same time, they really have learned something from it. That really is one of the most important things uh, that we need to emphasize. You are going to do well on your job if you can present the material better than someone else.